Hi everybody, welcome back to Sunshine Soap and Candle Company. Today I'm bringing to you another soap making video using sea moss. Last week you saw me use sea moss to make a cold process style soap and this week we're going to be making a melt and pour soap with sea moss and I'm going to be providing the full recipe in the description box below. So if you're interested in making this, just look in the description box and you'll find all the quantities you need to make this soap yourself. For my patrons this week, I'm gonna be offering the full written tutorial plus the written recipe. And if you're not a patron and you're interested in that, head on over there and you can unlock the full written recipe plus tutorial for just a $5 pledge. All right, let's get started. All right, first things first, I am using the crystal soap base from Stevenson. This is Stevenson brand and I did pick it up from Brambleberry. So this is a two pound little tub and we are gonna be using the full two pounds. So we just need to go ahead and get it out of this little container and then we're gonna chop it up into multiple little chunks here but i really am liking this brand i have used the nature's i mean i've used the nurture soap um, low sweat melt and pour i like that as well but um, i did take a chance on this a little while ago and i'm very very pleased with it so far so i'm just going to be using a soap cutter and a little knife here to get everything cut up into small multiple chunks Right, so the soap is all chopped up into little multiple chunks so I'm gonna go ahead and set it aside and we're gonna get ready to weigh out the sea moss now this is my sea moss that has already been processed and it's in a mason jar so real quick I just wanted to talk to you a little bit about the benefits of sea moss and why we wanted to add it to our soap so here it is it's all processed it's been in the fridge for a few days it's got like a very gelatinous um, bouncy texture to it and the reason we're using sea moss I can't believe I hadn't jumped on this trend earlier because sea moss is absolutely an amazing um, thing to add to your diet and also your skincare routine. It's got a ton of nutrients, a ton of minerals that your body needs, and it's loaded full of collagen, which is great for your skin. It gives your skin that bounce and that elasticity, and it's um, great for your joints and your hair. So. Really, I can't believe I haven't, I haven't looked into this more earlier. So we are gonna be adding this to the soap. You certainly can't eat it. It's a dietary supplement and I've been adding it to my smoothies and I really, really like it. So in my last video, I showed you how to clean the sea moss and how to process it and get it down into this state. So I'm gonna go ahead and insert the clip from that video here to show you what that looks like. If you've already watched that, feel free to fast forward through the sea moss processing portion of this video. But if you'd like to watch it, I'm gonna go ahead and insert it now, and then you'll see how we get to this state. Okay, so the first thing you wanna do when you're making your sea moss soap is go ahead and process the sea moss. Now, this is what it looks like when it comes to you. It's just dried out. Um, this one looks fairly clean, although you can see in here there's like some sand and some salt residue from the sea. So we want to go ahead and clean off our sea moss first. So that's what we're going to do. Now I am using the organic gold sea moss raw wild crafted brand from St. Lucia. It's non-GMO, it's gluten free, and it's 100% natural. So we are gonna go ahead and clean it off. I'm gonna show you how to do that. Okay, so all I've done is I've added some cool water to my bowl and just covered up the sea moss. And then we're just gonna come in here and we're just gonna wash it. So like I said, this comes from the sea. So it's gonna have bits of sand, bits of salt stuck to it. So you can see how the water is turning. Um, not so clear anymore. So we just want to do this in the bowl, wash it, kind of scrub it off. Okay, so as you can see, the water is no longer totally clear. So what we're going to do is go ahead and we're going to dump this water out and we're going to refill it 
two more times or until the wash water becomes clear. So we're gonna dump this water, refill it, and do it again until the wash water is clear. And I'll show you what that looks like when I'm done washing it. Okay, now I've done that a total of four times and my water is nice and clear. So what I'm gonna do now is dump out the wash water and then I'm gonna pour some distilled purified water over the top of this. Okay, so all we wanna make sure and do is we're gonna pour in enough distilled water, purified water. Just wanna make sure your water that you're using is not from the tap. You don't want any heavy metals or anything soaking into this. So we are just covering up the sea moss. It's going to double in size, if not more. So you wanna make sure you're just pouring enough water, cool water, um, over the top of this, and then you're gonna cover it and let it sit for 12 to 24 hours or longer if you like. I went ahead and let mine sit overnight. So I wanted to show you um, what that looks like. I did process some ahead of time so you could see what that looks like. So I'm gonna move this one over. So this is the one that I've been soaking since last night. And as you can see, it's a big difference. So the sea moss now is totally rehydrated and it is totally grown in size. It's also taken on a much different texture um, than its dried out form. It actually feels like uh, seaweed in the ocean. So that's what it looks like. So what we're gonna do now is we're going to puree our processed sea moss. We're gonna go ahead and puree it until it gets very smooth. So I'm gonna bring you over to the blender and show you what that looks like. Okay, so I'm using a high speed blender and I'm just gonna go ahead and pick up all my sea moss and I'm gonna drop it in. I'm reserving the water that it was soaking in because I'm probably gonna use some of that water to smooth out my sea moss. Um, and I don't, I would like to use this water because it's been infused with the minerals from the, from the sea moss. So I'm just gonna start by pouring a little bit in there and see how we like that consistency. I'm going for a very smooth sort of, I don't know, I guess, baby food consistency. All right, we're gonna go ahead and get it blended up. Okay, I'm definitely gonna go ahead and add in some more water. It's just a little bit too chunky for my liking. Okay, so I have used almost all of the water that the sea moss was soaking in to blend this up because like I said, I wanted it to be a consistency like baby food and I have gotten that. That took several minutes of um, blending and adding in the water and as you can see, it's a very like kind of gelatinous, smooth texture. So we're not going to be using all of this in the soap, but we are going to be using some of it in the soap and if you do run out of water, you can add just natural spring water or distilled water in here if you um, run out of the water that it was sitting in. But I just think that's a beautiful texture. We're not gonna have any chunks in the soap. It's gonna be very, very smooth. All right, I'll bring you over for the next step. All right, so now we're gonna go ahead and weigh off the sea moss. So I'm putting it into this beaker and we are gonna be weighing off two ounces of sea moss gel. Now, We are gonna be heating this up to get it down into a more liquid state. And I'll show you what that looks like in just a minute. But we are using two ounces of sea moss gel to two pounds of the clear melt and pour soap. Okay, perfect.
So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop this into a saute pan with a little bit of water and I'm gonna go ahead and start melting this down, kind of double boiler method here. I don't wanna pop this in the microwave because I want to gently heat this. So I'll show you what that looks like. Okay, I have this on the stove. I'm just gonna go ahead and turn my stove on to about a medium or so heat. I'm also gonna add a little bit of distilled water. Now this part I have not measured out. I'm just kind of eyeballing how much I need. I'm gonna stop there. And if I need more as it's warming up, I'll put more in there. But this is gonna help it kind of disperse and turn into a more fluid state to be ready to add to the melt and pour. Now I'm putting it over a double boiler method because I do not want to destroy the properties of the sea moss in the microwave. So I am putting this on a double boiler. So while this is warming up, we're gonna go ahead and heat up the melt and pour soap in the microwave in short, maybe one minute bursts until it's all the way melted down. I'll bring you back in when everything is melted. Okay, so while everything is melting down, I thought I would show you how I'm gonna prepare the titanium dioxide. So we are gonna go ahead and just use about a quarter of a teaspoon or so, putting it into this little container. I like to use a plastic container to mix my titanium dioxide because it comes off the plastic way easier than it comes off glass. So I'm just gonna go ahead and add in the tiniest bit, just enough to cover the titanium dioxide and get it all dispersed. So I'm just mixing it up. And that's it. So you really only need a little bit of titanium dioxide to um, change melt and pour from clear to white. And look at that, it doesn't stick to the plastic at all. That's a little pro tip of mine. All right. Okay, I wanted to give you a little update too on how the gel is coming along. And as you can see, it's getting very smooth and consistency here. So I'm just gonna go ahead and keep melting it down. I've changed the heat down to low. It doesn't really need a lot of heat here to get it down to this state. And I'm not gonna be adding any more water. Okay, my melt and pour soap is all the way melted down and it's sitting at around 140 degrees Fahrenheit. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my CMOS gel off the stove. And it is completely in gelatinous now, completely smooth. It's like um, a thin pudding. And I'm gonna go ahead and add it directly to my melt and pour. If you try to add this without getting it into the state, like straight from the jar, as it's gelatinous, it will not break up. It will a little bit but this way you're gonna ensure that it's completely smooth and you're not gonna have any chunks in your soap. Okay, so we're just gonna give this a good stir and then every so often I'm gonna give this a spritz with some 99% rubbing alcohol just to make sure we're not forming a skin and also to pop out any bubbles. Okay, the next thing I'm gonna do is go ahead and add in my fragrance because I wanna make sure before I split this off to do my colors that everything is already evenly distributed, the sea moss and the fragrance. Okay, so I'm just gonna pop it on the scale and then we're gonna add in, uh, today I'm using sea minerals from Candle Science. And sea minerals smells exactly how it sounds. It's like salty sea air, it's very minerally, I thought would be perfect for the um, sea moss soap because it's full of minerals. It's just a very clean, oceany type fragrance. Okay. Now we're just gonna give that a good stir. I'm absolutely
absolutely loving this fragrance. And of course, I've done a batch of this already and it stays really, really nice in the melt and pour soap. Okay, so now that that's completely mixed in, we're gonna go ahead and divide up this soap between these two pour pots. And I'm just gonna try to get as even as possible. Okay, and now it's time to go ahead and add the color. So all I'm gonna do is add in a little bit of some Sirens Song Mica. This is blue. So we're going for an ocean themed soap. So I'm using about a quarter teaspoon and I'm gonna give that a stir. And I'm gonna spritz it with some rubbing alcohol as well, just to kind of break up those mica chunks and the bubbles. Of course you could pre-disperse your mica into a little bit of rubbing alcohol. Sometimes I do that, but most of the time I just dump it right in. Okay, so we're just getting that really nice kind of deep oceany blue. And then into this one, we will be adding in the titanium dioxide dispersed in water. And we're gonna get a nice white, a nice bright white. Okay, it's hard to explain if you've never used um, sea moss in your soap, but it gives the soap an amazing kind of bounce and body to it. And it does carry over into the finished product into a really amazing texture in the soap. Okay, so we are gonna do a kind of a, lay, not layered, we're gonna do kind of a swirled um, melt and pour soap, which I have not shown you before. So I'm gonna go ahead and get my molds ready. So we are using these round, these rounds. And let's see if I can get this all into frame from here. Okay. And we're gonna do kind of a swirl technique with this melt and pour. So I'll show you what that looks like. This takes a little bit of practice. And actually, as the soap sets up just a little bit, meaning it's not super, super runny, that's when it's actually a little bit easier to work with for this technique. So I'm gonna show you what I mean. Go ahead and remove my spoons. Okay, so we're just gonna pour a little bit of the white right there and a little bit of the blue. And then I'm just gonna kind of alternate. I'm gonna put a little bit of white right here and then the blue right on top of it. And so on until it's full. As the soap sets up a little bit too, you can, um, your designs get a little bit less, uh, your swirls get a little bit less fluid and I'll show you, you'll see it in just a minute. Okay, so we're gonna stop on that one and I'm gonna spritz this one with a little, rubbing alcohol, and then let's fill this one.
Okay, all the molds are completely filled up and we're gonna give these several hours to set up, probably four or five hours before we try to pop them out. And these molds aren't exactly easy to get the soap out of, so we may pop them in the fridge after they're completely set up for just a few minutes to help release them from the mold. So I'll bring you right back to show you what that looks like. All right, everybody, we're back to go ahead and unmold these beautiful sea moss soaps. And I just think they look so pretty. So these molds can be kind of tricky. So you just kind of have to pull a little bit on the sides. And then I find if you flip it over and then just kind of press with your palm, there we go. Isn't that so beautiful? I just love it. I love how it looks just like the ocean. It's so pretty. It smells so good. Okay. Wow, I just love that one. how each one is a little bit different too. turned out I think they're so pretty and they smell very oceanic Ooh, I love that one right there so pretty all right let's go do a lather test all right everyone we're gonna go ahead and do a lather test now this one I made from a prior batch so I'm gonna go ahead and show you how this one is working um, it's not going to get quite the lather that a cold process soap does. That's just kind of the nature of a glycerin soap base, but it feels really good. And it actually does have a very good lather for a melt and pour soap. Um, I really am liking the Stevenson's brand soap base for that reason. The lather seems to be really good. So it's giving me some nice, soft, low foaming, dense bubbles. And again, like the cold process soap, it's giving the soap a lot of body and viscosity. Almost like if you were gonna add in like a glycerin to your soap. Just a beautiful, beautiful feeling. Um, I They use sea moss a lot as thickening agents and I can feel it in the soap. It's got a nice thickening kind of feel to it and it's just lovely. I absolutely love the skin feel of the sea moss in the soap. And I hope you enjoyed this easy to do melt and pour project, swirled melt and pour soap project. And if you liked this video, please remember to like, comment, subscribe, and share this video with a friend. Catch you on the next video. Keep shining.